Hello folks, today I've got a bit of a different one for you. I'm going to be having a look at the first production models for Storm Sunder Heirs of Rune. Okay, so let's take a look and see what's in the Lazy Squire Games box. I do love that. Inside we have Storm Sunder. So this is actually a um, promotional box showing the first of the production miniatures. So here you can see one hero and one villain. Let's just pull them out. And these are for Storm Sunder the Air of Rune. So we did a Let's Play and some interviews last year, um, about this time last year actually, when it was on Kickstarter. The Late Pledge is currently open and these are the first production uh, models we've seen. So we'll start off with uh, Lady Renata. So this is one of the villains in the game. You get this lovely fluff text. And then the miniature itself. So Lady Renata is one of the vampire council of the city of Tarpit that uh, you play through in this. Technically it's a board game but it's more like an RPG. And it's an unusual setting, it's, it's um, a neat background because it has elements of sort of gothic horror you would expect to see with classic European vampires, but also at the same time you have these touches of, um, I suppose, Egyptian or Middle Eastern uh, sort of things coming through. You've certainly a lot of, an awful lot of Egyptian horror with the likes of the pharaohs and mummies. Um, so this angelic-like creature who's been turned still has these wings with... Um, I suppose armour or possibly banding around it. Beautiful detail. When we played it we had uh, pre-production resins which were very crisp and we wondered at the time how the actual casting would come across uh, and the answer in this case is very very well as you can see even I suppose the top down where you're going to be seeing it from most of the time you see this um, textured stone base with a pillar and a gargoyle on it. So from the boots up to the crest of her hat or helm there's acres of detail in there and for a board game piece um, it's fairly startling just how much detail there is in there. So some of the models are I'd say the majority of models are scaled to each other there are a few that are sort of titan based um, which while still massive would not be the size they should be because they're board game pieces and they're, they're uh, a representation so rather than being a meter tall they're probably you know 12 to 14 centimeters tall so they still tower over everything else but this is one of the more I'm gonna say restrained 28 mil figures um, as far as size goes for this, because I know some people will be interested, it is almost seven centimeters tall from tips of wings to bottom of base, and it's on a 45 mil round, a bit over 45 mil. Um, so that is one of the I imagine final bosses. Um, when you play through, you play through in a story mode. So potentially who you're going to come across and when you come across them will change depending on the characters you have and when you meet them. So after Lady Renata, we have one of our heroes. So Kapak Roca. And again, we have a little bit of a story to go with him. Um, 
So he is a hero. He's a hero who stayed in tar pit after the vampires arrived because his friend was there, Vanessa, if memory serves. So that's a little bit of a story between him and Vanessa, which is lovely. And then looking at his miniature, again, another big, big figure um, for your, your gaming. And again, beautifully detailed. He has um, almost an Aztec feel. There's not, like I say, it's not our world, so there's no one defining feature. Um, you have characters that come from across this world. In this case, he comes from Atalcan, I think. It has been a while since I've looked at it, so something to that effect. But you can see here he has a, a jaguar on his back. Details are beautifully sort of engraved in there. So if you're not a um, figure painter, if you are just playing this as, as a, a board game collector, you could get away with just washes or contrast paints. We'll pick these details up and you won't have to worry about actually individually painting the, the spots on the animal skin. And then this ruff could be a whole brace of feathers, I suppose. He has these uh, Mesoamerican style sculpt on him, down to his massive stone hammer. And uh, incredibly fine detail on the armour. So the, the crispness of this is absolutely wonderful for production miniature in... Um, it is not a hard plastic as far as a, a high impact, so it's not a polystyrene based sprue, it's it's more like um, a PVC style plastic, there's a flex in it. His hammer for example was slightly bent when I got it uh, and I just straightened that with a bit of hot water. But as you can see he is a striking figure and game wise uh, I played him in the uh, the playthrough. He is essentially your tank, um, which is very important when you've got some squishy people in your party, like Vanessa, who you don't want to have die. Again, we have these rocks that have um, a mixture of poor devoured citizens and sort of creepers coming across in the runes, which gives it a kind of a, a South American or Middle American feel as well or obviously tar pit. Base wise he is on a uh, 25 mil round, although obviously textured. And he, as a hero, is approximately 55 mil from bottom of base to the top of his hammer, or 40 mil to foot to head or foot to eye line. So when you have these two together, as far as uh, player character and adversary, they are a magnificent pair. So like I say, the, um, the late pledge is still open uh, and will be until I believe the summer. It's not due to deliver until next year. And when we looked at it originally, some people commented that the uh, the Kickstarter wasn't going to be fulfilling very quickly and they were wondering why and from what I can see is they wanted to make sure it was done right because these are by far and away some of the best board game miniatures I've ever ever held in my hand uh, and for such a unusual setting and really interesting game um, I really enjoyed the the short playthrough we had I say short it was an introductory scenario and it still took us a couple of hours to, to fight our way through um, but there should be an awful lot of replayability in it there's a few of the other characters I can't wait to see how they actually come out so there we have it uh, that is the production miniatures for Storm Sunder Heirs of Ruin okay folks so there we have it uh, the first production models from Lazy Squire Games Storm Sunder Absolutely superb models. Uh, they've really captured all of the detail that we see in that initial prototype resin, which is always a, a worry when you see a, a resin prototype 
and you know the final product is going to be uh, plastic. Will it capture that detail? Will they look as good? Will they be as robust? And yes, yes, and yes is the answer to all of these questions. So if you are interested, uh, I think there's several hundred hours of gameplay available in that uh, RPG board game. Uh, and it is available as a late pledge on Kickstarter at the moment. I think it's due to deliver next year. So you have a few more months if you're interested in picking up Storm Sunder Heirs of Rune. Uh, then you should pop over. The address will be in the doobly-doo below. Until next time, folks. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.